Well, do you remember scenes like this? It doesn't seem that long ago that we had almost a desert like France and southern England. We are slowly but surely starting to see a change taking place thanks to increased rainfall. Thanks for clicking on to the Wednesday edition of Open European Outlook. It is not um, all done and dusted, that's for sure, um, in terms of precipitation anomaly and the deficit. Um, that has been uh, you know, built up over the course of the last nine months, but we are certainly chipping away. And um, you know, back at the very end of August, we started to see kind of thundery downpours developing. And therefore, I was starting to question whether this was uh, the kind of start to some sort of a change taking place in the kind of you know, relatively long-term pattern. Uh, quite often, patterns get locked in and it can be hard to break that down, especially when you've got a situation where the water temperatures are exceptionally warm, albeit now we're starting to see that exceptional anomaly compared to normal warm anomaly that is starting to kind of ease marginally over the North Atlantic, and I think more in the way of disturbed weather as we progress through the remainder of this autumn, hopefully we will start to take a little bit of a heat out of that North Atlantic uh, basin here. Certainly across the North Pacific, we're starting to see a little uh, area of cool developing here, as you can see, but very, very warm just to the south of the Aleutians. We're seeing cooling along the Asia coast. We're still seeing that uh, negative Indian Ocean dipole of cold uh, to the west, warm to the east. There's the La Nina. We're starting to see a little tiny bit of warming now starting to take place on the northern flank of that cold pool in the East Pacific, if you notice here. Be interesting to see over the next uh, several weeks what takes place with the North Atlantic. But it was at the end of August that I did say as temperatures start to slightly ease over the Northern Hemisphere, we should start to see the tropics becoming more active once again. The process of trans uh, transporting heat out of the tropics towards the pole uh, kicked back in as temperatures eased in the mid to high latitudes here. What I think is going to happen is that uh, and, and what is, uh, I believed would happen would be the increase in tropical activity, the increase in the northward progress of systems interacting and energizing the North Atlantic jet stream. We would start to see an increase in rainfall once again, and that is exactly what's happened. So, while the warm waters during the late spring, early, and midsummer uh, increases pressure over the north. The northern portions of the hemisphere what happens is sometimes as you start to cool the atmosphere we we see those very warm waters having the exact opposite response and we start to see an increase in rainfall and that's exactly what we're seeing uh, at this moment in time exactly to what extent we see the increase in rainfall remains to be seen uh, through the remainder of this month november and on into the winter but certainly the cfsv2 is indicating that the period between the uh, 1st of October through the uh, early portion of January, we've got firmly wetter than normal conditions overall. But today's video is all about rainfall and the deficit that we've seen uh, during the summertime, not so much about blocking and temperature and whatnot, but it's certainly seen the recovery in the rainfall uh, scenario here across the west of Europe here. So this is rainfall during the month of April, uh, firmly drier than normal. May, not too bad, wetter than normal across the northwest, drier than normal across the south. The month of June looked like this here, dry in the east, uh, wetter in the, the west. Then we had the month of July. It was, of course, the, the England's driest since 1935. And uh, do apologize, I'm running very low on battery here. And um, it's interesting to see that, uh, you know, for summertime between the 1st of June and 31st of August, 2022 is up there with 2018, 2006 and 2003 warmest, driest years. And of course, in terms of, um, you know, driest and warmest combined, 1995 and 1976 is well ahead of this cluster of years, as you can see here. But uh, it's going to be interesting nonetheless to see what happens. Certainly the month of September has seen that turnaround taking place. I believe the tropics is a firm driving mechanism behind that change. And it'll be interesting to see what happens as we go 
deeper into the, the remainder of autumn and into the winter season overall. But certainly this would be welcome news uh, if we see this kind of winter. Of course, it could be quite a wet winter if that is the case. So that's it for today. Uh, short and sweet. Hope you enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. We're back again uh, tomorrow, hopefully, with more. Bye for